Hello again, it's Locke Newman. I've had this folding bike clock in my uh, collection for a while and, well, I just bought it on sale and I thought, that looks really cool, could be a really fun pick. Um, I'm probably never going to use it on a bike and I don't think it's probably, uh, get rid of that bit, um, I don't think it's probably going to be a super strong lock or anything, but do you know when you just buy a lock because you're curious as to what it's like and it was sort of cheap and it looks kind of cool? Yeah, that's this lock. So, if I get that out, that obviously clips onto your bike frame with the straps I just threw over there. And what I like about this is the form factor. It reminds me of that Abus lock, albeit this is a bit cheaper. It wasn't like massively cheap, but it was, um, it was quite cheap. It just has this long snaking uh, chain which obviously unravels and then you can loop back and uh, then lock it in. Well, let's get the keys, I'll show you. So, undo that, put that bit in here. And then I'm sure it's a bit of a fiddle trying to locate the pin. There we go, got it. And oh, lock it back up. And yeah, well, I'll fold it up so you can see it. But it's all locked up. Then you would uh, unlock it with your key and, and away you go. Um, so yeah, I just I just like the form factor of this lock. I thought it was kind of cool. I was curious as to how it fits together. I like how it all snakes around itself. Yeah, it's just kind of cool. Um, all of this is plastic coated, but it's made of this um, it is magnetic. I'm going to generously call it steel. Um, I don't know if it's hardened steel. I sort of doubt it. I wouldn't say this is more than um, an emergency lock. I, I wouldn't use it as my main form of security. Probably not even as a backup, frankly, but you know, it is what it is. And um, how do I lock that back up? Nope, wrong way, that's the way. Uh, but it's clearly a disentainer lock. And one of the questions I get asked with these is how do you tension? these locks. Is it front tension, back tension, or rear tension, or center tension? And um, one of these keys I've got a mark on. So um, if you look at the bitting, which is not bad for this kind of lock, it's got some a medium, like a zero lift. Um, this is not lift, but the rotation, a full rotation, and then a semi rotation at the back. I don't think this whole tip here engages with anything. So uh, this one couldn't be rear tensioned. It could be center tensioned, um, on this middle disc here, but likewise it could be tensioned um, at the top because if I put this in, you'll see I put a little black mark on there. That black mark aligns with the top of that spinner disc at the front. Now, if that black line um, was here instead at the tip of my fingernail, that would mean that I'd have to tension maybe off the first disc anyway, but then um, use the picking tip to tension off the middle disc once I'd finished to then back rotate the first disc with a tension tip to try to get an open. Sometimes though these locks don't tension um, from the, the front, so you'd have to center tension them with a center tensioning tool, but um, this one luckily as you see by that black mark you can front tension it. There's a space there for a disc and that means I can tension off that first disc. Right, let me uh, go get a tool and we'll have a go picking it. So I've got my disc detainer pick and I've got a little disc turner, making sure everything is over to one direction. This is actually really cool because it, it actually holds, it's because of its shape, um, it's a hexagon, yeah. It sits down really nicely, unlike a lot of these locks for which are awkward shapes. And then what I would do is I will just pop the tool all the way down and then try to just see whether I can rotate the first disc only and that will provide tension. Now it's a bit wobbly as you can see. Um, I actually modified this particular tool so that it could pick um, uh, slightly higher security locks with the deeper keyways but uh, we'll have a go at this anyway. So make sure I'm on disc one and try and make sure everything's centered and aligned. So let's have a go at that. Okay. Disc two binding. Disc go to three. Good. Four. Well, technically it's five, isn't it? Because I'm touching off one. I'm 
six. Oh, and actually seven, and we're open. So I was wrong. That uh, that last disc there wasn't a spacer. You could rear tension off this. Quite a deep amount of key there, to, um, which signifies quite a big gap between the bottom and the top. So you need a, a, an adequately deep rear tensioning tool. But yeah, we've got an open there. And I think, if I wiggle that out, that means that um, if we have a look under here, that pin, which locks in, is unlocked. So yeah, um, odd lock. I'd, I'd love to know what this metal is, but it's, it's, it just feels, everything feels a little bit cheap. Um, it, the, it's clearly the just little metal um, lozenges which are pinned together, but it's nowhere near as strong as some of its competitions. Um, certainly not a, a match for the, the Abus um, sort of version of this, which sort of stacks in a sort of oblong shape. But yeah, it's kind of cool. I like it. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it as a um, a lock for securing your bike, but it's a fun pick. And that's about it, really. So if you like this video, please leave a like. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you have a comment, leave one below. I'll read them all. I'll reply to as many as I can. And of course, I'll see you all next time.